Hey there, once again, YouTube. Just putting out a quick update. I do have my August 2019 monthly update, which I did put out about the, uh, today in the afternoon sometime. Uh, it is up right now. I will leave a link to it in the description box below if you want to go check it out. I talk about Yellowstone, Long Valley, and all the other volcanoes along the West Coast. And I do show a whole slew of information, as usual, in my monthly updates. So go check that out if you want. Now, moving on... I have not done my deformation updates yet because I do that every two months or so and it has been two months since I did it last. But what I was doing is I was creating my own custom plots but instead I'm going to just do my own video just a lot quicker than labeling the plots which take a long time since I have to generate it through Microsoft Excel, do the proper plots, find the proper dates for each time range and it's just it takes too long than just to do it in a video and just to show you guys quickly what the deformation was like for that time period. So I'll just start doing videos for my monthly deformation updates. It's not up yet, so just keep an eye out for on this page right here. Deformation updates should be up soon, somewhat soon. Okay, now moving on, let's go to my blog post that I posted just a little bit ago about Steamboat Geyser. It is set to erupt probably in the next three days at the max if it sticks to its normal schedule, but... Something that's very interesting that I found out is there's somewhat of a way to predict steamboat geyser eruptions. Not really the exact uh, hour, maybe not even the exact day, but you can kind of judge exactly how, when steamboat is going to erupt when certain precursors occur. I thought there were no precursors at all and they, it just, you never know when it's going to erupt. But there is one data set that you can use that you can see there's clear precursor activity that indicates a steamboat eruption is coming. Okay, so I did put out a post about Steamboat Geyser, about Steamboat, what it does, how to monitor, and how to predict. Now I talk about Steamboat Geyser and the uh, why it is only surface vibrations that we are seeing, how to monitor Steamboat Geyser for eruptions via the many different types of data sets, and how to predict a Steamboat eruption. Now, th to start again, this will not show you exactly how to predict, quote-unquote, an eruption down to the hour of the day. It will, however, give you the ability to know the eruption is just around the corner. For this example, we are using temperature data from a thermometer placed in one of Steamboat's outflow channels. Now we're going to watch this video real quick. Credit goes to USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientist in charge, Michael Poland. All right, here it is. Let's start our review of the data with Steamboat Geyser, which had another record-setting month in August. It experienced water eruptions on August 12th, 20th, and 27th. The eruption on August 27th was the 33rd eruption of the year, of 2019, which breaks the record of 32 that was set just last year. What you're looking at here is the temperature record from Steamboat Geyser. There is a thermometer that's in the outflow channel of the geyser. Now when there aren't many eruptions, it records this normal up-down, which is basically just the temperature of the day itself, the air temperature. But as minor eruptions start to happen, we see more variability. And right before an eruption happens, we get a couple of days of lots and lots of minor eruptions, this sort of very a wavy line right in here, and you don't see the daily temperature variations anymore because there's so many minor eruptions. This spike in temperature right there is the water eruption that occurred on August 27th, and immediately afterward the temperature drops down, and we go back to these periods of just daily temperature variation when there aren't minor eruptions. And then the minor eruptions start to pick back up again as the geyser becomes more active. So, Steamboat's continuing its pattern of lots of water eruptions. Uh, where it stops, nobody knows yet for 2019, but certainly we've already broken the record of 2018. So, that's very interesting, isn't it? Now, as YBO scientist in charge Michael Pollan said, the steamboat temperature gauge can detect minor eruptions anywhere from two to three days prior to a major steamboat eruption. In a way, this can serve as a precursory signal. When a steamboat eruption nears, minor eruptions and activity increase. Therefore, this can be used to detect when a steamboat eruption will occur. Obviously, the precursor time periods vary, but the main steamboat eruption usually occurs, as seen by, uh, by the past few eruptions on the temperature data, two to three days after the precursor events begin. Once the main eruption occurs, normal background activity resumes. This can be witnessed in the following image. Notice, again, just like Michael Pollan said, the minor eruptions, the activity increases, and then boom, we see an eruption and normal daily temperatures are taken or excuse me, are recorded. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, given that knowledge, look at this plot right here. You can see three main steamboat eruptions. Uh-oh, I forgot to capitalize the Y. Oh, 
you can see three main steamboat eruptions with clear precursors. The next precursor activity has not started, but if Steamboat holds its usual schedule, it will show precursors in about the next day or so. Notice that. Precursor signals, which are from the minor eruptions and the activity increasing, boom, eruption. Then normal activity, then all of a sudden precursors occur again, then boom, eruption. And notice how the precursors, here's August 26th, here's August 23rd, so from here to here, each section is three days. So in total, it takes about, I'm going to say, two and a half days, around there, two to three days of precursory activity before the main eruption occurs. Precursor activity, boom, steamboat eruption, and then normal activity resumes. Now, use the steamboat temperature gauge to judge if a steamboat eruption is near or not. However, how do you find this data? Go to volcanoes.usgs.gov slash volcanoes slash Yellowstone and click monitoring. Then zoom into the Norse area and click the Instruments Visible tab. Then click Hide All and click Temperature for easy finding. The following is the location of the Steamboat Geyser Temperature Gauge, which is right here. Use this to monitor for precursor signs that Steamboat is about to erupt. So I hope this post helps. I will leave a link to this in the description box below. Uh, we're going to go take a look here. Let's go to Yellowstone just real fast. I'll show you how to get there. Volcanoes.usgs.gov, find a U.S. volcano, Yellowstone. Give it a second. Quick monitoring. Okay. Scroll down a little bit. All right, we're going to zoom into the Norris area, which is right up here. Just right in this location right here, just barely north of the Caldera Rim, right up here. Now, as we go over, we're going to click Instruments Visible. Gonna quick hide all and quick temperature. Now we're gonna go over here and zoom in and go to Steamboat Geyser, which is right here. Gonna quick as past 24 hours, the past 30 days, or the past seven days. Again, as you can see, this is the most recent eruption right there on the third. And you can see clear precursor activity just prior, about a two and a half days or so. About two and a half days prior to the event, two to three days or so. However, as of 6 a.m. this morning, and right now 7.21 p.m. Pacific Time, August, or excuse me, September 6, 2019, and we do see at 6 a.m. the data stream has ended. For all the temperature gauges in Norris, it may just be a hiccup. I hope they put it back up because I really hope, guys, because I did not know this possibility existed, and now that I do know, I hope this station stays online so we can look for precursor activity and know when a steamboat eruption is just right around the corner. So again, precursor activity is real, as you can see from the minor eruptions and activity that increases and the temperature that increases along with it. And that's that for that. Let's see if any major earthquakes have happened while I've been recording. Nothing too major. Seismicity has been primarily calm in the United States. It's been somewhat low. But you never know when something may happen. Hope you guys have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you later.